Hello beautiful light skin ladies. Welcome back to the channel and hello to all the other amazing souls watching right now. This is Dolce K and today I want to talk about what an exotical is. Yes, there are a dozen videos about what is an exotical. Exoticals United has an amazing playlist. I think she has a series about her journey and her ideas of what an exotical is and I think that they are very informative and uh, insightful. However, I am making this video as a response to Harmony Simone TV so it will be a little bit different because there's been some confusion like people still think that we created the term exotical when we absolutely did it and it's so ironic because the same people who are complaining about the existence of these terms exotical preference unambiguous black women they're the same people who created these terms so ironic right but before we get started go ahead and hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and before i even get into it let me know your thoughts i want you to pause the video and tell me where you think the term exotical came from what do you remember from your time being on social media and on YouTube. So I'm gonna start off by playing this clip from a video that was published three years ago by Lexis Exodus, where she talked about an exotical whose name is Maryam Abdurab, who was kidnapped and killed by a black man in Atlanta. Yes, I know, very tragic. I won't be going into any triggering content uh, in this video, but let's go ahead and listen to this soundbite of what she has to say about what the term exotical is and where it came from. So today we're going to talk about the exotical. And exotical, I'm not quite sure where I initially heard that phrase from. I think I may have heard it from Paris Milan. So shout out to her. Um, if not, please feel free to correct me for um, into credit who originated that term. So anyway, so you're exotical, let's go into their profile. So their appearance, they are racially ambiguous women and quote unquote exotic looking women. Their behavior, the exotical is a non-black woman who is, like I said, racially ambiguous. And she's pedestalized by Tyrone because she is exotic and she's typically Hispanic, Asian, or some other ethnicity. So you can clearly hear she didn't say anything about Exoticals United. She didn't call out anyone else but a fellow unambiguous Black woman who's also a content creator named Paris Milan. Okay? And I noticed that in this video that Lexus Exodus did three years ago, she's basically talking about a bunch of quote unquote exoticals and these terrible things that happen to them, referring to them mostly not by their names, but by the term exotical or a poor exotical. She even went so far as to create a caricature of exoticals to define what an exotical is. And this is coming from the Black women empowerment space, okay? Let's take a look at this caricature that she made. And I'm not sure if she made it, but she did put this in her video. You can see her watermark in the screenshot right here. Um, but this is what was going around in the Black women empowerment space. So she has a non-Black looking woman uh, on here who is, I guess, in Blackistan. And she's saying that I am the preference, but oftentimes am beaten and abused by my Dusty. Uh, she says, being a prefer predator's preference makes me the first to be preyed upon. And I don't disagree. I don't disagree with any of this, but I noticed that this is a caricature, right? And it's centered around not hey, we understand that there's a group of men that pose a threat to all women, but it's centered around, hey, this woman who is supposedly higher up in the racial hierarchy is getting the same treatment as us, ha, ha, ha. That's basically where she's coming from with this. And she even admits that exotical is also known as the preference, but doesn't receive preferential treatment, right? So. 
How is it a benefit to be pedicillized if you don't receive preferential treatment? So when people tell us that exoticals, you know, think that we're better than everyone else, that's not true because we don't really have that preferential treatment from black people. No, like that's not. And when we do, it's not, we don't perceive it that way. Just because black people or some colorist black men are going crazy about our hair and our skin tone, that doesn't make us feel good. It actually is very yucky, okay? So, but let's look at the left side of this caricature. She is talking about exoticals being foreign or being exotic or being racially ambiguous and being pedicillized specifically by black men. And that an exotical knows that this you know, this man just likes her for her, for her uh, appearance and is white worshiping. I don't know what white women have to do with this, but again, anything that is not unambiguously black during this time, black women were equating that or relating that to white women. Okay. So she's saying they don't matter. They don't care. Um, they'll still get with this man and use them for money. Right. Uh, but then they still get mistreated, cheated on and abused. So this is basically just a caricature. Uh, and honestly, if we were to replace the words preference with black women, since, I mean, this is a, a shared experience between black women and exoticals when in relationships with black men, that would be seen as racist. Like if this woman had dark skin and she had an Afro and she said that I am, you know, I'm the black, I'm the black woman, I'm a black queen. But even though I'm a black queen, I'm oftentimes beaten and abused by the men in my community. This would be seen as insensitive and racist because while black femicide is a reality, while intimate partner violence is also a reality, who would want it to be perceived or be portrayed this way? You wouldn't want something like black femicide to be portrayed this way where all of the attention is now on the victim instead of on the perpetrator, right? I've never seen a caricature like this made for black women, not at all. And if I if I have, and I just don't remember, I bet you like if there is actual a, actually a caricature out there of black women regarding black women's experiences with black femicide and domestic violence and intimate partner violence, uh, it's being condemned as racist and problematic. You don't make caricatures of victims, right? And especially not if they're black, but if they're not black, if they're an exotical, it's okay. I have some more receipts. Look at this comment. Uh, these receipts basically show that we did not come up with the term exotical, okay? So this person says exotical has been around for years, if not decades. I think it got really popular within the past five years when people started to make started using it to make fun and labeling black men's preferences. And they're exactly right. This comment was from three years ago, and they're saying that even then, at three years ago, it was popular or it gained traction within the past five years because people were using this term to make fun of women who were pedestalized by black men instead of making fun of the black men themselves. Like, make it make sense. Here's another receipt. This is why we're not lying when we say that people like Cynthia G, Chrissy, Lexus Exodus, Harris Milan, they created this term. Someone else says, exotical. I think Chrissy made up that term, okay? And I just wanna mention that this video it, that Lexus Exodus made, it was not, the main message was not that, hey, black men are a threat to women in general right that was not the main message the main the main goal of that video was to give black women something to feel better about that about the fact that black women or black men were preferring mixed race women or lighter skinned women or non-black women and say hey you know what it's okay that our counterparts like these women because they're beating them too they're killing them too so they're not getting anything better than we are I mean, tell me what else would make these women relevant to black women empowerment content creators other than the fact that they were abused, brutalized, and even killed by black men.
these women don't actually care about the quote unquote exoticals. They're using this as like, they're consuming it. They're, con they're consuming it as entertainment. So I just want to conclude this really quickly about what an exotical is, what the word means. Okay, so this is something that originated from the Black women empowerment space, and it was being used by Black women in this space as a sexist racial slur to describe any woman that looked ambiguous, that was mixed or looked mixed or that wasn't Black. So it targeted any woman who wasn't fully black or didn't look fully, fully black. And this term was used to reduce them down to the objects of sexual appeal to black men via their ethnic makeup. So it's clearly a dehumanizing term, okay? And they're celebrating the intimate partner violence that victimizes exoticals. Black women content creators have been for many years engaging in discussions and creating content that highlights the victimization of exoticals in the context of relationships with Black men. And while they were doing this, they were overtly displaying schadenfreude, basically deriving a sense of pleasure or satisfaction from the fact that these women were being abused by Black men especially if it reinforced narratives about competition or inequality in the racial hierarchy of women, right? So this video that Lexus Exodus made is just one example of many that was created not to say, hey, we sympathize with other women because we understand that, you know, it's black men who are the issue that are very violent towards women and we all need to come together and do something about it. No. Black women were creating this type of content in this space so that they could show other black women and show their audience that, you know, exoticals are getting the same black man. And so they could kind of cope with the reality, the very real reality of black femicide and colorism. And I do want to emphasize that this is not something that was a rare occurrence. Like this wasn't something where, oh, this content creator happened to make this one video about this one exotical. No, they created this term because they decided to create a slew of content, a library of content about specifically exoticals and preferences being victimized and brutalized. They were celebrating and relishing in the fact that these other women of other races were being brutalized and victimized by black men. Initially, the only difference between exoticals and black women was that exoticals were of a different race or had more admixture or just looked different. But take that out of the equation and they're both in relationships with black men, like there are exoticals who date black men who are being brutalized and victimized. And there are black women who date black men who are being victimized and brutalized. And let's take this beyond dating. There are exoticals who have black fathers or who have black male family members or are living in a black community who are brutalized by the people in their community, just like black women are brutalized by the black men in their community. So there really was no reason for this division anyways. So my question to all the Black Women Empowerment creators, and specifically to Harmony Simone TV, I want you to think about this question, okay? And try your best to gather research to answer it. How did creating the term exoticals benefit Black women? What benefit did Black women get out of creating the term exotical? You'll notice that all of the content in the Black women, uh, Black women empowerment space about exoticals is all about how a man is treating another, how a man is treating another race of woman. It's all about their dating outcomes. You know, you'll see baby mama this or single preference, single mother preference that. It's all about male centeredness. Okay, and I think that's particularly interesting because you'll also see them talk about exotical men or non-black men and praise them, but how can you divest to another race of men 
and want to praise them, but then you want to degrade their counterparts. But the purpose of creating this sexist, racist, racist slur was to further degrade a group of women that's already being sexually targeted by black men, okay? And I'm not saying this is all black men. I'm just saying that this is something that exists. Like there are, I agree, I will never say that there are no such thing as color as black men. We know that that's a thing, okay? But the black women empowerment space created this term so that they could really degrade a group of women. And they wanted to turn the racial hierarchy that they believe in upside down. So the women in the black women empowerment space, they subscribe to a racial hierarchy, especially as it pertains to women. They didn't want to get rid of it. They wanted to turn it upside down on its head. And I'll talk more about this later. But ultimately, the result of creating this term exotical, and then on the other side, making the opposite of an exotical and unambiguous Black woman, that established both an intraracial and an interracial division, where dark-skinned Black women with unambiguous features are seen as superior, and more importantly, where all other groups of women were being dehumanized and degraded in the media uh, created by Black women empowerment content creators. Okay, so on the screen here, I have a picture, it's like a graphic that I made that basically describes the racial hierarchy that Black women and the Black women empowerment space subscribe to. I also wanna emphasize that I myself am a Black woman, but I do not subscribe to any racial hierarchies. And uh, that's a huge thanks to this exotical space. But um, also the way I was raised, I wasn't raised to interpret reality through a racial hierarchy, despite being Black, despite being Black and female, and despite being Black female and living in America. But take a note of this racial hierarchy, how it has unambiguous Black women at the bottom and then has white women at the top. Really crazy, right? And if you remember in one of my past videos, I shared a clip of uh, another content creator, I think her name was Flower Tower, and she was talking about the racial hierarchy as well, okay? So this is what they subscribe to. But through the creation, through their creation of the terms exotical, okay, and unambiguous black women, they strove to create a racial hierarchy that was basically the opposite of this, right? So they didn't want to get rid of the racial hierarchy. They just wanted to turn it on its head, where now you have an ambiguous black woman at the top, and then everybody else, except for white women, are considered exoticals. And remember, they do associate and export exoticism to, or exoticalness to whiteness, okay? But here in our space, we don't have a hierarchy. And I think it's important to point that out. At this point, you may be wondering why even create a space for exoticals? Why even associate ourselves with that term if it is such a sexist and racist slur? And if the experience of being pencilized and fetishized by black men doesn't yield any real benefit and it can actually result in us being unalive, why would we cling to that term? And that's a really great question. And my answer is that it's reclamation. We're reclaiming the term. And communities have done this many times before in history. But when you linguistically reclaim a term that was intended to be derogatory, like how black women intended for the term exotical to be derogatory, and then you transform it into something positive or empowering, like that's powerful. And I don't understand why people are upset at us for reclaiming that term. That's like being upset at women for reclaiming the B word or being upset at black people for reclaiming the N word or being upset at LGBTQ people for reclaiming the word queer. All right, so communities often do this to gain control of the slurs that are being historically used against them. And at this point, I do count this as history because as I showed you, you've got stuff reaching all the way back into 2007 with this exotical term. And oftentimes when communities do this, they are stripping that term's harmful intent, okay? And they're using the term as a symbol of pride and identity. Here in the exotical space, one of the things that I immediately think of when I hear the word exotical is unity. 
That's literally what I think of when I hear exotical or exoticals united, I think unity. In this space, we have somewhat redefined what it means to be an exotical, and it's not so race-based, right? It's more so experience-based because when the Black Women Empowerment content creators were using these terms, they were also calling out light-skinned women. They were calling out any woman that looked different, any woman that they felt like, um, you know, didn't look Black enough or didn't uh, act Black enough by way of their opinions and their beliefs. In the Black Women Empowerment space, people think that if you're a Black woman, you must think this way or you must look this way. And if you don't, you're an exotical. That is literally what was happening. So now in our space, it's about the experience. Most importantly, it's about the experience. And we celebrate all skin tones. We celebrate all hair textures. Now my channel is for light-skinned Black women overall because you don't really have a lot of channels talking about the light-skinned Black female experience in the Black community. You got a lot of channels talking about the Black, experience, the black female experience in the black community and outside the black community but they're mostly about like dark skinned black women you don't have a lot of channels doing that same thing for a light skinned black women so i will be one of the first or one of the most recent because i'm pretty sure there were others before me um but i just i don't know of i don't know them but yeah speaking of uh you know, celebrating other skin tones and hair textures. A lot of people think that this space is divisive or colorist, uh, but we're not the ones that are trying to replace one racial hierarchy with another. You want to know what racial hierarchy we're, we're promoting? This is the racial hierarchy we're promoting on the screen, okay? You see, it's a, it's a circle. It goes in a circle. There is no one on top. So there's space in the exotical space for literally everybody. Anyone who can relate to some of our experiences of being thrown in and out of blackness or being brutalized because of our admixture. And that's why we need this space because there's no room to talk about color discrimination against light-skinned people in the black women empowerment space. Light-skinned black women did try to start discussions about color discrimination against light-skinned black women and black women like unambiguous black women did not want to hear it and to fight back against that they lumped us in in this exotical category okay so yeah that is my take on what an exotical is uh who created these terms uh, and this is historical because this has gone back to 2007. It's now 2024. So we have every right to reclaim this term. And everyone who's mad, like if you're watching this and you're mad every time you hear the word exotical, you need to get mad at the likes of Lexus Exodus, however you say her name, and Cynthia G and Chrissy, because they all were using these terms and they created them. They created the racist, sexist slur of exotical. I mean, this one even made a whole caricature of exoticals. That's just terrible. To all of the Black women empowerment content creators and their followers who are angry that we exist and angry that there is a division, um, it's my hope that the division will end but I'm not going to stop making content about our experiences as light-skinned Black women or the overall experiences of exoticals. There is a difference between being unified and showing solidarity and being silenced. All right, thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Hey, this is Editing Dolce. I just wanted to put a disclaimer out there that there are some exoticals in this space who will match pettiness with pettiness. So if you're walking around here in these exotical YouTube streets and you're calling people mutts or ramen noodle head, don't be surprised if they match you with that same energy. For a group of women who pedestalize being a girl's girl and are such moral good girls, you should know better, right? You should know that you treat people the way you want to be treated, right? Right? <laughs> Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching and have an amazing day.